as kind of alluded to before, we've got two types of credits. We've got non-refundable credits and refundable credits. Now, both of these are designed to provide taxpayers with financial relief, thank, thank the Lord, uh, by reducing their tax liabilities. Both non-refundable and refundable directly reduce a taxpayer's taxes owed on a dollar-for-dollar -dollar basis. Now, this means that for each dollar of credit, the taxpayer's tax liability is going to be reduced by an equivalent amount. However, these are going to function differently in terms of their potential to generate a refund. We'll dive into that. But essentially, non-refundable means you can't go below zero. You're not going to get a refund. And refundable means you can get a refund if you go below zero of taxable income. First, we're going to deal with our non-refundable credits. Now, I'd say overall, yeah, make sure you kind of memorize which of these credits are non-refundable versus which are refundable. Of these, we've got brief descriptions of each credit, but we will go through each credit in its own slide with examples as they differ in the level of importance. Now, these non-refundable tax credits, these can reduce a taxpayer's tax liability to zero, but they cannot result in a refund, as we've mentioned. In other words, if the total amount of these non-refundable credits, let's say it's $10,000 of non-refundable credits, and we only owe $2,000 of taxes, well, we can only take $2,000 of credits, and then we'll carry forward those credits. Depends on the credit on those rules. What's not refunded, some of these common ones are going to be the child and dependent care credit. With this is going to be different than the child credit. That's something I'll mention a few times because it is something that's confusing. The, the child care credit and then the child and dependent care credit, those are different credits. Now, this one is a credit for taxpayers who pay for the care of a qualifying child or dependent to allow them to work or look for work. We've got the elderly and permanently disabled credit. This is going to be credit for taxpayers who are either age 65 or older or permanently and totally disabled. You see, again, like let's think about the, the point of these credits. It's obviously to help out those who need extra help, like those over the age of 65, disabled in some capacity, children, any dependents, education. We want to promote education. Now, the education credits, there's two credits, the lifetime learning credit and the American Opportunity Credit, both of which are going to provide relief for eligible education expenses. We've got the Retirement Savings Contribution Credit, also known as the Savers Credit. This is going to be a credit for low and moderate income taxpayers who contribute to a retirement plan or an IRA. It exists to help motivate individuals who are of those lower and moderate income tax brackets to invest in their future, their retirement. We've got the Foreign Tax Credit. This is a tax credit for taxes paid to a foreign country on foreign source income in order to prevent double taxation. If I get a dividend from a foreign entity, a lot of times that foreign country will withhold an amount, and then the U.S. government will want a portion of that. So that would be double taxation on that dividend, which in essence would be triple taxation, right? Because that company made money, distributed it to you, and you got double tax there. So that's a credit for taxes paid to a foreign country on that foreign sourced income. We've got the general business credit. This is going to be a combination of several business tax credits, which include the investment tax credit, work opportunity tax credit, and some others. And lastly, here for non-refundable, specifically, we've got the adoption credit. This is a credit for qualified adoption expenses paid to adopt a child. Again, we want to promote good social causes such as adopting children, such as getting people to save for retirement, all of those. Now for our refundable tax credits, as promised, we do see our uh, different credit here. We have the child tax credit and the child independent care credit. So we want to make sure we understand that those are two different ones there. Refundable tax credits not only reduce the liability, but can also result in a refund. If the credit amount is more than the tax owed, so if we have $10,000 credit, only owe $2,000 in taxes, we'll get a nice fat check for $8,000 from the IRS as a difference. Here are some common ones with the child tax credit. This is going to be a credit for each qualifying child under the age of 17. We'll talk about those limitations when we get to the slide. We've got the earned income credit. This is going to be a credit for low and moderate income working individuals and families based on earned income, filing status, and the number of qualifying children. Now, this is not a credit, the federal income tax withheld, but it kind of works similar to how that is. But when you get federal income tax withheld, if, you know, in your paycheck, right, when you get your W-2 at the end of the year, it'll say how much you got withheld. However, if you had more money withheld than you owe, you'll get that money back as a refund. Makes sense. It just works pretty much the same as a credit. That's why it's included here. Excess social security tax paid. Similarly here, if you overpay other taxes that get withheld, such as social security tax, the excess amount is going to be refunded through your tax return. And then lastly, back to an actual credit, we've got the American Opportunity Credit. Now, while the American Opportunity Credit generally is a non-refundable credit, it's proportionally, it's a, kind of a hybrid, half and half, not half and half exactly, but 40% of the credit can be refundable for certain taxpayers. We'll see that when we dive into it more specifically.
Hey there, are you ready to not only pass your CPA exams, but truly understand and enjoy the material while studying? I know it seems impossible, right? Especially to enjoy the material? We'll do it together. Tap into the power of cpa.examprep.ai, where we've got personalized quizzes, multiple choice questions, memorization guides, flashcards, simulations, all tailored to your learning. Our adaptive study planning puts you on the fastest path to success and lifts you back up if you fall behind. Avoid wasting your precious time and money attempting an exam with a low chance of passing because who wants that? We want to get you through this process as quick as possible. Our exam readiness prediction lets you walk in with confidence knowing that you're prepared for success on exam day. Thankfully, there's no payment method needed to get started. So why don't you come join us? Visit cpa.examprep.ai and let's achieve your exam success together.